We have been looking at the commercial implementation of quantum computing in the last week. It is a very important step because as we started in this area of quantum computing, we were in discussing how difficult the concept of getting to build a quantum computer today is. So, in that respect, the very fact that we are now able to discuss commercial implementation of quantum computing is a huge step forward. In order to understand the implementation issues further on and to be able to uh, connect ourselves to the principles and the ideas that are still a huge gap between the development of this problem as well as the implementation. This week we have decided to revisit the concept from where we all started this area of quantum computing. We are going to revisit the some of the principles and uh, we will find out if we can make necessary connections to the places where implementations have been achieved and to areas where implementations can even have a better aspect in the future. Also in many cases, these implementations that we discussed about have a much larger impact than just the very uh, principles of showing quantum computing. So, we will be dealing with these in this week a little bit more in order to understand how this has been developing. So, we started off the idea of quantum computer from the very idea that quantum computer uses properties of elementary particles that are predicted by quantum mechanics. In general, we are used to the idea of computers where the information is stored in bits. In these quantum computers that we have discussed, information is stored in terms of qubits. The theoretical part of quantum computing has been developed substantially based on the idea of these qubits and the practical implementation as we have been discussing from the first point onwards is that it is still a big problem. However, uh, at least our last week lectures must tell you that there have been large progress in the last uh, several years which are making it possible for real quantum computing to become a reality and there are many more uh, companies who are coming into this particular area. We all know the reason for this effort lies in the fact that quantum computers promise a lot of development as we have been discussing. So, many practical problems require too much time if we want to solve them in usual computers. There can be problems which can take the age of the universe, for example, the factorization of thousand digit numbers into primes. So, certain problems definitely require this particular kind of um, radical computational ideas which will make them go or make such almost not possible problems into a soluble problem. With our conventional computers, there are issues which are limited. For example, the increase of processor speed has slowed down because of the limitations of the existing technologies. Beyond a certain point, these will again become bigger and so there has been a drive towards going to these uh, principle. Theoretically, quantum computers can provide truly parallel computations and operate with huge data sets. So, with these basics, um, as we have been discussing from the word go, quantum computers have been an area which has been pursued for the future of computing. In many ways, quantum computing is probabilistic and that has its advantages. When the quantum computer gives the result of computation, this result is correct only with certain probability. Quantum algorithms are designed to shift the probability towards correct results. 
So, running the same algorithm sufficiently many times the correct result can be gotten with very high probability assuming that we can verify whether the result is correct or not. The number of repetitions is much smaller that are necessary as compared to the usual computers. So, the probability angle of the computers in these cases are taken advantage of and many many iterations which are otherwise required can be put to certain advantages when we are applying these kinds of principles. Now, a quantum system that we have been using are the ones which uh, are of elementary particles nature. So, for example, photons, electrons or nuclei that are governed by the laws of quantum mechanics. Parameters of the system may include positions of particles, momentum, spin, polarization. These are all the things that we have utilized for implementing quantum computer. The quantum systems can be characterized by its state that is responsible for the parameters. The state can change under external influence and that is one of the ways how this particular principle of implementation of quantum computers had been uh, taken care of. So, by using fields, laser impulses etcetera, the concept of computing has been implemented. The measurements are the last and the most important part of this entire exercise, so that these can be finally used as computation. So, some of the most important quantum mechanical aspects which have been used for quantum computing are the principles of superposition, which is one of the first principles that are necessary for the system to have any benefit over the classical system. If a system can be either in two states, it can also be in a superposition of them. This is the principle which is used in terms of the superposition idea. Some parameters of the elementary particles are discrete for example, energy, spin, polarization of the photons and those are the discrete parts which become the quantum mechanical quantities for us. Changes are reversible and that is one of the biggest hallmarks of quantum computing that the quantum mechanical aspects make sure that the processes would be reversible. The parameters are undetermined before the measurements and that is one of the most important parts of quantum computing that is different from the classical computer because these parameters if they are determined they become classical. The original state is destroyed after the measurement and that is another very important aspect of quantum computing which is distinct from the regular computers. It has to follow the no cloning theorem which means that it is impossible to create a copy of an unknown state and which means that certain aspects of quantum computer are going to be always extremely different from the principles of classical computing that are used to. So, for instance, uh, since cloning is not allowed, it will be difficult to think about processes where the same system is supposed to be um, reused. The other big aspect of quantum mechanics lies in quantum entanglement and quantum teleportation. So, superposition, quantum entanglement, these are often the key elements which are talked about in quantum computing. However, the other very important aspects as we discuss or laid it out here are obvious when we have looked at the implementation aspects which are the discreteness of the quantities that we are looking at which is the quantum nature, the reversibility of the entire process that we are looking at which is the quantum mechanical aspect of this entire computing process, the undeterminate condition of the parameters before the measurements to ensure that the quantum nature of the system is maintained the no cloning idea or the fact that the original state is destroyed after measurement are also some of the very important key features of quantum mechanical 
aspects of quantum computing that has to be maintained while the process of computing is done in this approach. The qubit is the unit of quantum information for us in quantum computing and in general one qubit can simultaneously contain two classical bits. The qubits can be viewed as quantum state of one particle say the photon or the electron and the qubit can be modeled using polarization, spin, energy level whichever are the quantized properties of the system. The qubit can be measured, however once measured it is destroyed. As the result of measurement we get one classical bit 0 or 1. So, the model of a qubit has been popularly used in our entire approach here which is the 0 and 1 states to give rise to the wave function psi. So, we have approached this problem in terms of vector algebra with the coefficients. So, a 0 and a 1 are complex numbers such that the uh, mod squared of them add up to give rise to a total of 1. So, in essence these a 0 and a 1 coefficients are containing the contribution of each of the states that are possible in the quantum state. So, the wave function is essentially a superposition of the basis states. So, the basis states are our zeros and the ones. The choice of the basis state is not unique and this is one of the things we had also discussed where the basis state transformation is often necessary for understanding or applying the principle of quantum mechanics quite easily. The measurement of the wave function results in 0 with probability of uh, say its coefficient square and 1 with the probability of the coefficient of its particular coefficient square. After the measurement the qubit collapses into the basis state that corresponds to the result. So, this qubit collapse essentially means that we have lost the quantum bit. So, here is an example the coefficients are half and root 3 by 2 which means that we can have a one fourth probability of measure 0 basis state and 3 fourth probability of measure of 1 basis state. So, in general the subsystem of n qubits would contain 2 to the power n classical bits which are our basis states and which means that the potential of a quantum computer would grow exponentially. We can measure the individual qubits in multi qubit system. For example, in a 2 qubit system we can measure the state of the first or the second qubit or both. The results of measurement are probabilistic. After the measurement the system collapses in the corresponding state. Let us take the case of 2 qubits. 2 qubits can combine such that they will have all possible combinations of these uh, basis sets. So, there will be 2 to the power n which in this case will be 2 to the power 2. So, there are 4 possibilities that we start with with different weightage factors and if we take a specific example and we measure the first bit what we will find is there are 2 cases where we are measuring the qubit 0 and in the second part we are measuring qubit 1 with each with probabilities which can be calculated for the part where we measure the first qubit as 0 the probability is 2 by 9 and the part where we measure the first qubit as 1 the probability is 7 over 9. So, it can be written in terms of 2 different representations each with probability 1. The first case where we measure the first qubit as 0 and the second case where we measure the first qubit as 1. So, the coefficients change so that the ratio is the same, but they essentially represent 
the same form. So, our two qubits are getting superimposed to give us the result that we are looking at. It is a combination of the two qubits which can be separately looked at so that they come together to form the superposition states. So, these are independent qubits so that they could come together and we can have a system of two independent qubits which are two non interacting particles. For example, as we take here uh, each having zeros and 1 qubits and when we put them together then we land up producing these uh, total combined system which will be eventually looking at the kind of superposition states that we talked about. And so, we can have the basis which starts with individual zeros and 1 states. So, this is the principle of superposition. However, there is also another set of states which are entangled states. The principle there is that there would not be possible to have any initial sets of individual states which have the zeros and ones such that their combined state is possible to be represented in terms of the entire set so that they can be broken down into the combination from where they start off. In other words, when a state which is entangled is measured in terms of the first bit for example, we are going to measure the first bit as 0, then we have 100 percent probability of the first case only and there is no probability of finding the second case. So, the probability of finding 0 in the first case is going to be 1, the value of the second bit with 100 percent probability is going to be 1 in the first case and 0 in the second case. In other words, the measurement of the first bit essentially ensures the measurement of the second bit and this is one of the principles here which makes it as if the measurement of the first qubit is ensuring the measurement of the second qubit. So, only a single measurement in this case would give rise to the measurement of the second qubit with 100 percent probability. So, the entangled states are such where we only need to measure one of the states which ensures the measurement of the other state. So, maximally entangled states or the Bell's basis are the ones that we just looked at one of the examples uh, which is of this kind and the other example could be of the other kind and both of them are ensuring that once we measure the first qubit, the second qubit measurement is guaranteed because they are entangled. So, that is the point of entangled states, they cannot be broken down into the individual qubits which is possible for superposition states and that is why these are unique and they have been utilized as we know in teleportation a lot. So, here is the idea behind the uh, teleportation scheme which we have discussed earlier and uh, we utilize the principle of these bell qubits being sent as a measurement of the information exchange in this particular case enables this advantage. The first step involves entangled qubits a and b 
and a communication channel which is going to be for example, a phone. So, that the qubits with unknown state that Alice wants to send to Bob, A is Alice, B is Bob makes A and C entangled. Some transformations are necessary and Alice measured C, whereas Bob now knows the uh, state of B makes B into C and Bob has the qubit C. So, here are some simple operations on bits. So, these bits are the classical bits where we have used the principle of not which is one of the major starting points for the computation in the classical sense or the or gate these are all reversible. However, and is not a reversible gate addition modulo 2 or ZOR gate is also a reversible gate because it is a combination of the or and the not gate. So, in terms of classical computing it is possible to have gates which are non reversible and uh, that is why the AND gate is possible. However, the uh, quantum mechanics as we have discussed uh, all these gates will not be possible. So, what we notice is the operation AND and OR are not invertible even if we know the value of one of the two bits and the result of the operation we still cannot restore the value of the other bit. So, for example, if uh, we have x and y and y is equal to 0, what is x? So, that is the problem of the AND or the OR gates and so, because of the laws of quantum mechanics, quantum computations require to be invertible, which means that the classical basis of the gates for computation has to be looked at in a way so that it has to be reversible. Are there such operations and it is true that the SOR gate which is the addition modulo 2 gate is 100 percent reversible. The other important aspect is the linearity and the principle of parallel computations which is followed in quantum computing. So, if we have f as a quantum operation that corresponds to a function f of x taking to x prime to y prime, then the quantum operation has to be such that it will be doing a linear processing of the entire system. And one application of f gives rise to a system that contains the result of f in all the inputs. So, it should be enough to know the results on the basis set. It has to be possible to do this entire processing through matrix representation and by invertibility. So, these are the basic requirements and one of the important aspects we have to always remember in terms of uh, quantum mechanics is the fact that Heisenberg's uncertainty principle always um, has to be there which says that this is actually is a quote taken from uh, Max Born's Nobel lecture which gave a very nice understanding of the uh, quantum mechanics in terms of Heisenberg's picture. Uh, Born by the way is the person who basically gave the physical meaning of the psi. So, Max Born is the one who gave the idea that uh, psi square represents the probability. So, his interpretation is very important. Quantum mechanics shows that not only determinism of classical physics must be abandoned, but also the naive concept of reality which looked upon atomic particles as if they were very small grains of sand. At every instance a grain of sand has a definite position and velocity. This is not the case with an electron which is the quantum particle. If position is determined with increasing accuracy, the possibility of ascertaining its velocity becomes less and less and vice versa. So, this principle of quantum mechanics is anyway built in. So, we have to be very careful when we are talking about determinism which is the determined final result of computation. So, one of the first principles of implementation of quantum computing that we looked at 
involved optical methods, interferometers, where we use the principle of light or photons to understand the idea of quantum computing. So, it in some sense brought in forth the idea of deterministic behavior versus the probabilistic nature of the photon. Whenever an incident beam of light is going to fall on a beam splitter which splits the light into two parts, a detector on two ends can measure both the reflected beam as well as the transmitted beam. And this can keep on going on in change and this can be a cascading process which can keep on going on as we show in this uh, second part. And everywhere we can keep on measuring how much light will go through and how much will be reflected. As a result, this is the principle which was used to show how the two could be related by using the principle of photon probabilities. So, the source whenever it was directly measured, it was of some value and then as it was put through these different uh, changes, we were able to see how these things are getting broken up. So, if the split at each place is half, then we expect at every point of a beam splitter measure at the end an intensity which would be in the order of one eighth of the original intensity which is measured because at every element only 50 percent of the light is going to come through. So, this was one principle which has been used and we discussed that. Now, we are going to look at um, basic ideas behind the one qubit operation where the um, principle of the mathematical abstraction vectors in two dimensional complex space which is our Hilbert space and the Dirac notation involves the ket bracket and the bra bracket. The ket one is the column vector and bra one is the row vector and each of them can be transposed with respect to each other to get from one to the other. The bracket together forms the dual vector which is transposed and complex conjugate. The state description therefore, can be looked at by using this uh, representation in block sphere uh, in the two dimensional case just uh, with respect to a circle where each has a certain uh, representation with respect to the other one. So, in terms of the three dimensional picture as we are saying it is a sphere about which the maximal probability of one or the other are at the two ends of the axis and anywhere else it is a superposition which are represented by the rotation of this particular representation. So, the wave function is the one which can collapse on either of the two ends at any point of time, but before measurement all the possible combinations are existing and that is the power of this particular quantum way of evolving. So, that is why a bit can be in two distinct states only 0 and 1 and the measurement of one does not affect the other. However, for a qubit it is going to be in the superposition of both of these conditions it can be in state 0 or in 1 or any other state that is a linear combination of the basis states. When we measure we find it has a probability of finding it in state 0 with probability of the coefficient square of each of these states depending on which we measure. So, in some sense a single qubit will be possible will have all the possible superposition states in addition to the basis logical states of 0 and 1 whereas, the bit can only have two possibilities 0 and 1. 
So, the qubit measurement however, will give rise to the two probable conditions, one with probability p 1 of finding it in 1 and probability of p 0 of finding it in 0, but all possibilities before the measurement exist. So, the typical operations that are valid for these states can be the quantum knot as we say that is a reversible one um, and it can be put in linear sense because that is what we have just discussed. So, a knot would essentially mean that if you have state 0 it will go to 1 and if it have 1 it will get to state 0. So, knot operation on any particular state will be represented by uh, this particular approach where we can go from one to the other state with this matrix multiplication. Similarly, a Hadamard gate would make an equal superposition of both the states that we have and that can be written in terms of uh, this particular operation where the square matrix represents the Hadamard gate operation. When we go to two qubits, we can represent them as vectors in two dimensional Hilbert space with four basis sets as we discussed before. When we measure the pair of qubits, we decide that the system is in one of the four states and these are given with respect to the probabilities that we discuss here. The two qubits will again have their different probabilities which can be represented in this form where the sum total of that square of them will give rise to a total probability of 1. We have been looking at several aspects of the initial basics of quantum computing which we had looked at earlier. We revise this area once more because we are going to relook at the implementation angles in such a way so that we can understand how these different processes that we are looking at can be improved on or can be looked at into the other various different ways that we are doing this problem. We will continue with this in our next lecture which will and we hope to see you there. Thank you.